Welcome to Science Gal Aquatics, I'm Carrie. And in today's video, well today we're gonna grab Jesse and we're gonna clean some filters. So stay tuned. So before we get started here in the fish room, I did want to mention that I am a huge fan of hang on the back filters, especially the Tetra Whisper filter. It's the one I've just always gravitated to the most and the one I have the most experience with modifying. But in the beginning of my fish keeping journey, I didn't really know what I was doing, much less when it came to cleaning filters. If it broke or got clogged, I just tossed it and I did always use the inserts. But now I don't do that anymore and I do kind of modify them a little bit, quite a bit, but I do clean them now. So I'm gonna go grab Jesse and hopefully explaining to you how I clean things and modify my filters. Hopefully it can save you a couple bucks in the future and just give you some tips for your fish keeping career. So let's go get started. So this is a 20 long guppy tank that needs a whole lot of maintenance. And as you can see, this filter is not working. One, because it's not plugged up, but two, it's because it's really clogged. And we need to do some deep cleaning on this filter. We don't normally clean the filter this much, but let's go over the steps. Real quick, I know this guppy tank looks awful, but the fish that are in here, they do really well and they reproduce quite often. But I know I could do better when it comes to what it looks like. But do you have a tank that just works really well, but just doesn't look very good? Let me know down in the comments, but let's jump back into it. The first thing you're gonna need is a five gallon bucket and a siphon and you're gonna take a little bit of this water, the tank that you're using the filter on, take this water out and put it in the bucket. taking very much water out of this particular aquarium just so that I can maintenance the filter. But while we wait, why not watch some guppies? Always double check that it's unplugged. Getting it through the mess of cord. <clears throat> Cords are a nemesis of a fish keeper. Now, first thing we do is we pull out the biomedia and almost all of Science Gal's filters have been modified. So, using biomedia that just needs to be rinsed with the old fish water from the tank, that way you don't lose any beneficial bacteria and some sponges that definitely need rinsed and squoze out. And you can already see those 
it's really turning the water. <laughs> Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time. Just if you notice your filter slowing down, just give the inside of the media and everything just a good couple squeezes or until you notice everything squeezing out. But don't overclean your filters. It's okay to have some gunk in there. It's just if you notice things slowing down. Oh, yeah. They look they look a lot better already look at the difference they're still and they don't have to be spotless that's a, still a big difference though. it is all right put that down all right i'm gonna go ahead and pull some of this off uh, and I guess you could call it a pro tip but on hang on the backs some of them and I haven't even looked at this one yet very closely have an actual screw to allow you to pull it apart. I believe it's the older models have a screw but I do not this one does not nope this one does not and they're that simple that is it that is and you can see there's quite a bit of a little bit of calcium build up because we have very hard water so we'll put that back down there and let that rinse a little bit all right now here comes the fun part these are super simple and easy to do all that is is a propeller in there and as i'm turning it you, i can feel it's really sticky there's either calcium buildup or just some sort of grit sand it's picked up something in there so with this one that hasn't been running for a while i'm going to take a little more time with it and I'm going to use my trusty tool that I always use. It's just a little bitty wooden skewer. Works great. You can put it in there and it will pry the actual propeller out because it is just a magnet. And you can see all the, look at all that. That is nothing but calcium build up all over that so and that's going to be the same inside of here so that again is why i have my little skewer because i can just take it and swirl it around and scrape it so that it makes a better connection And like Carrie said earlier, it doesn't have to be absolutely clean everywhere. Just in here where the actual impeller turns. And as you can see, there's all kinds of stuff. Just a little bit of gunk. And you probably can't see it. I can see it way down in there. There's a lot of buildup. And I'm just going to go around and just clean all that out so that the magnet makes a better connection. And once I get that done, I'll dump it out, put it back down in the water, and let it set. And this is the part that takes a little bit of time. I've done it several different ways. I have used Brillo pad, my hands, depending on how long they've set, to get all that off of there. Because it's very, very stuck on there. The best thing I've found so far is actually sandpaper. Really fine sandpaper.
know, now it's all starting to break off of there. And this is what I really like these wooden skewers for, because you can pick without worrying about cutting yourself or anything else. And they knock that calcium build up right off of there. These skewer sticks are surprisingly helpful. I use them quite often around the fish room. And you just keep working at it until you think you got most of the bulk off of it. Some of them I've seen, they get really, really bad and you can use a heavier sandpaper or even like a steel wool will go a little faster, but this should do it because it just needs to make a better connection. Make sure you do stay tuned to the very end because there is a part that we should have took a little bit more time on. And it's as simple as it'll pull itself right back in there. I am going to clean just a little bit of this off real quick just because it bugs me. That looks much better. I like that. And it just snaps back together. There we are. And you can throw all of your sponges, whatever type of media you use, back in there. And that's it. It's ready to go, ready to get plugged back in. Is it ready? Is it? <laughs> You'll just have to see. Just ignore me, I'm in the way, but I did use this time to do some maintenance. However, I did not make this aquarium look any better in the end, but I did take advantage of this time to do some much needed maintenance. Yay, it works! Well, no, no it don't. So we did take this filter upstairs to the kitchen sink to tear it all apart again and take our time and clean everything again. So we just repeated our steps, but we did not rinse with any water from the kitchen. We just used the sink to hold all the parts while we did take our time once again and repeated our steps. But if you do have to rinse with water, just make sure you set your filter to the side and let it dry completely. Okay, everybody, this one was really gunked up. 
you can see how thick that is on there, the end of my finger. I had to step my game up and go with a lot heavier duty sandpaper because that is a lot of buildup. You can see where I started to clean it and I will show you what it should look like. That looks so much better. It's worth taking your time. Well, look at that. This time, it worked. But those are the steps to how I maintenance my Tetra Whisper. Hang on the back filters. It's super easy and not difficult at all. I do invite you to click on another Science Gal Aquatics video. And if you're all caught up, check out our newest podcast, Aquarium Dilemmas. And if you would like to watch it, check out the memberships down below. But until next time, I'll see you in the Sunday live chat. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Thank you.